Walter, who is 72, is here for his three-month follow-up of his hypertension, dyslipidemia, and depression. He is currently on lisinopril 20 milligrams a day, amlodipine 5 milligrams a day, sertraline 75 milligrams a day, and atorvastatin 40 milligrams a day. You added the amlodipine at his last visit because you wanted to try to get his blood pressure under better control. He comes in today and says, my legs are swollen all the time and I'm getting up all night to go to the bathroom. What can I do about this? Hi, this is Frank Domino, and joining me today is Dr. Susan Feeney, Assistant Professor and Director of the Family Nurse Practitioner Program at the University of Massachusetts Medical School's Graduate School of Nursing. Good morning, Susan. Good morning. So Walter's a pretty common fellow. He he's, is. He's got high blood pressure. Yep. We didn't get him under good control, and um, we're now looking at, at adding another medicine for his peripheral edema. Right. Um, this, is, this is what you describe as the prescribing cascade. Can you describe to me what is the prescribing cascade? So the prescribing cascade would be uh, someone presents to you with a new condition or a new symptom, and we recognize it inappropriately as a new condition when it's actually a side effect of a medication that we've given. And so we wind up giving a medication to treat the side effect. And that is the prescribing cascade. And we see this a lot with polypharmacy. And many times we don't even realize the drug-to-drug -drug interactions. There could be multiple drug-to-drug -drug interactions or side effects. And so we wind up treating the side effect of a med or meds that we've given before. And I think as patients get older, their chance to see other providers and have other medications initiated. Exactly. It becomes very possible for drugs to have interactions. That's but, right. You know, if, if a patient walked in with new per dependent edema that's bilateral, I'm not going to think PE, but maybe a heart failure and Correct. start working them up for that. I'm going to start doing extra testing as right. well. Right. That's right. What are some of the risks associated with the prescribing cascade? Well, they're pretty serious, and we always think of this in the older population, but it's true even in younger people. We, the, the risk is when you add a medication, medications are not benign. They all have an effect, and so they can cause, again, side effects. They can cause additional testing, hospitalizations. Um, for example, look at NSAIDs. People take, you know, I always say if one is good, 10 is better. Mm -hmm. So people take a lot of NSAIDs, and many times people will come in, we'll check their blood pressure, it's elevated, we keep chasing that blood pressure, when actually they're taking 600 milligrams of ibuprofen every day. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's a cascade right there. I actually remember when ibuprofen went over the counter yeah. and it became the leading cause of acute kidney failure in the United States. That's just right. because people thought, oh, this tastes good, I'll take more. That's right. Yeah. Um, and gastritis. Yep. You know, so many times uh, it's not just prescription meds, it's over the counter meds. But prescription meds are things that we have con really have control over and we need to be very clear. Uh, when someone comes in with a new complaint, is it the medication, especially in an older adult where there may be decreased renal function and, and maybe not a true understanding of how the medication should be taken. So how common is it that patients get on the prescribing cascade? What does the data say? Well, there's been a recent study um, out of Canada, and they looked at uh, 40,000 individuals with hypertension over a two-year period of time. And um, they looked at particularly people who had been given um, for new onset hypertension who were given calcium channel blockers in, in specific. So um, an 80 percent of that group who got a calcium channel blocker got amlodipine, which is a non dihydropyridine type of uh, calcium channel blocker, which can cause dependent edema. And they found that there was a significant increase in prescribing of loop diuretic or Lasix within 90 days of that new prescription. So to treat this ankle edema, which most people know that is a side effect, but even with that, these folks got a loop diuretic. And the worry with that is when you give someone who's euvolemic, right, they, they're not hypovolemic, right, they are, they are, have dependent edema because they have smooth muscle relaxation, you give them a Lasix, you can make them hypovolemic, you can make them orthostatic hypotensive, you can cause falls, you can cause kidney failure if they become, you know, don't have enough fluid. Sure, like so, abnormality. Right, absolutely. I mean, it's it's sort of stunning. But I can I have seen this in my own practice where people are coming in. You're on Lasix. You know, well, I have some swelling in my feet. Well, maybe there's other reasons than to you know, offload your fluid. Sure. You know. So yeah. So so the data the data bears this out. That yes. This is not it's not rare. It's, Correct. It's pretty common. Yes. Um, all right, so we've got Walter here. He's got swollen ankles. Um, he's on a variety of different medicines. 
Um, how are we going to address Walter's situation? What are our options? He's on lisinopril, on lodipine, sertraline, and atorvastatin. Well, there's a couple things we could do. First of all, take a look at his blood pressure. We could do a trial of taking him off the amlodipine completely, see if the, you know, see the ankle edema will probably resolve and see what his blood pressure looks like. Or if we're concerned that his blood pressure did respond nicely to the amlodipine, we still have room in the lisinopril to go up to 40. We could add hydrochlorothiazide, which is a diuretic, but it's not a loop. It's not going to cause um, decreased volume, and you might get a nice decrease in that blood pressure. Uh, we can also look at what is his diet? What is he eating? Is he eating things that are, you know, like one of my patients came in with ankle edema after eating two cans of Pringles over the weekend. You know, what about exercise? You know, is he getting out and moving about? That would help his blood pressure and, and all the other things in his life. So um, I think not adding a loop diuretic here uh, is, is essential. And uh, unfortunately, it sounds like it's not uncommon. I would, I would probably agree that um, the amlodipine being the issue, I'd probably stop it and right. think about something else I could add or just stop it. And as you say, I'll say, listen, I don't want to give you any more drugs. Let's find a way we can get you an exercise program. I think that's awesome. That's if, right. If he absolutely pushed back on it, um, maybe I would add, add another agent. But right. I would, rather, I would rather not. We've talked about Walter and we've talked about... Um, about uh, the prescribing cascade, how do we go about making this actionable throughout all our patients? Is there any process you can recommend? Yeah, so um, the, the two physicians who coined the phrase price prescribing cascade had an article that came out a couple years ago saying, let's revisit this. And they had three points. The first one was, is the new drug that you're adding, are you prescribing it to treat a side effect of an existing med? And that's something we need to, and in all of the medications, um, is this a side effect? Um, and then is the initial drug that led to the side effects really needed? So for example, here the amlodipine. Okay, his pressure was slightly up. Do I really need that? Are there other ways that I can, for example, uh, substitute a safe or alternative, decrease the dose, or take it away completely and try a non-pharmaceutical or non-pharmacologic treatment? And last, what are the harms and benefits of continuing the drug therapy that led to the cascade? So again, go back to the amlodipine. The harms are that he's, you know, he's got this fluid, it bothers him, and let's see about taking him off and finding an alternative. Sure, if we don't take him off, um, his quality of life has already been diminished because he's urinating more at right. night, um, but you can easily see him falling, getting right. a cut and getting an infection, right. all for, for unnecessary reasons. It's so interesting that they gave that three-step process. I, I learned the hard way about hypertension. I, I saw a young patient who seemed healthy, had elevated blood pressure, I put him on medication, very resistant, added a second, and was thinking about adding a third, and then realized that he was probably an alcoholic, he drank heavily every night, so that was raising his blood pressure, and then every day to go to work, he was taking NSAIDs throughout the day, so he was taking two over-the-counter right. agents that was raising his blood pressure. We got, I got him to um, cut way back on his alcohol and got him to stop taking the NSAIDs, and his blood pressure came down without any medication. I added to the prescribing right. cascade right. of this person's life. So. Right. I mean, I can think of several patients where, you know, treating them for, you know, I had a patient who had diabetes and, and depression and sleep insomnia, and so I slowed low-dose trazodone. She wound up being incontinent in the morning, and it turned out she was somnolent and couldn't get up to go to the bathroom. But here I was thinking she's got this, you know, a, a, new, problem. a new problem, and it was all medication-related. And this is um, it, it is a huge problem, it, and it speaks to the polypharmacy that we see, and it also talks about how we can think about de-prescribing. You know, this is all very tied into that. And I, I think we need to be concerned with older adults, but we really need to be concerned, like you said, with this young man. It's, it's not just in the older population nope, that I we agree. see this. Susan, this is great. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Practice pointer. When new symptoms arise in patients, especially older patients, consider medications they're taking. Also consider changing or deprescribing medications to help address polypharmacy. Join us next time when we talk about using torsamide rather than furosemide in treating congestive heart failure.